In this video, we're going to take a look at shortest path problems and a way to solve them, and that way is Dijkstra's algorithm. So the way that we're going to model this is using something called a weighted graph. And in a weighted graph, it can be directed or undirected. Obviously, the graph model I have here is undirected. And essentially, we're just going to label each edge with a travel time, a travel cost, a travel distance, or whatever it is that we're trying to model with that particular graph. And then we can use those to determine the shortest time or the least cost or the shortest distance between some starting vertex and any other vertex. So in our example, we are going to use vertex A as the starting vertex. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the fastest way to get to B, the fastest way to get to C, the fastest way to get to D and the fastest way to get to E or cheapest, whatever it is that you're modeling. However, it's important to note that this is not a minimum spanning tree algorithm. So if you are in my class, you don't know what a minimum spanning tree is yet. We're going to learn that in a little bit. Um, so perhaps that's not confusing to you. If you've studied, studied minimum spanning trees, that is a tree that's going to have some beginning vertex like A, and then the cheapest path or cheapest way in order to visit each other vertex. So it is a little bit different in that this is not a minimum spanning tree. It's not the cheapest way to visit all of the vertices. It's the cheapest way to visit each individual vertex. So I wanted to give you the actual algorithm in plain language, just so you understood exactly what it is that we're going to do. Um, and then we're actually going to work through this together. So to begin, we're going to choose our starting vertex. I've already told you we're going to start with A. So we're going to label that distance zero and all of the other distances we're going to label infinity because we want it to be a very large number. And eventually we will replace each distance with another distance based on the repeating steps that I've given you. For the repeating steps, we're going to examine any unvisited neighbors from our visiting vertex. So again, we're going to begin at A. So we're going to look at anything that is connected to A, so any adjacent vertices to A. And we're going to look at the distance from that vertex. And if the distance is less than the known distance, so at first it's definitely going to be because our known distance is going to be infinity to any other distance, then we're going to relabel the distance in the path. And if it's not, we'll leave it as is. And then we're going to visit or choose the unvisited vertex with the smallest known distance from the start vertex. And then we're just going to keep doing that until we have visited every single vertex. Now, different textbooks, different videos you may find on YouTube, have you perform this algorithm in different ways. So it's still the same algorithm, but it might be that you use a table or it might be that you redraw your graph for each step. So in your textbook, it takes you through how to do the redrawing for each step. I'm going to do sort of an abridged version of that because I'm too lazy to redraw my graph each time. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how to use a table because I feel it's probably the easiest way to do it. We're going to do this example step by step. And as we are working through this, I'm going to show you both how I would like you as my student to show work on a table or show work on the graph. Now, if you are watching this video on YouTube and I'm not your instructor, I would make sure that you reach out to your instructor to see how he or she would like you to show your work. For my students, I do want to see the process involved, so I don't just want to see the final outcome, but I want to see the steps that you took. So that's what I'm going to model here as we go through this example. So as you can see, I have my weighted graph, and we've already determined that we are going to begin at A. So Dijkstra's algorithm says determine your starting node, okay, that's A, and label that distance as zero and label all other distances as infinity. So if I'm using the show work on the graph method, that's how I show work on the graph so far. If I'm using the table, I would say the shortest distance of A is zero. And the path for A, I don't have to worry about because to get from A to A, I didn't go anywhere. 
but everything else I'm going to use a distance of infinity. And if you'll notice, I'm drawing infinity not super big because I'm saving room in that table to show the next steps. So the next step from A is first to indicate that A has been visited. So I'm just going to circle it to know that it has been visited. And then I need to look at any unvisited vertices. So to get from A to B, that would take a distance or cost of five. Now five is kind of a lot, but it is less than infinity. So I'm going to cross off infinity and replace it with a cost of five. And the path comes from A. And again, I would do the same thing over here. I would replace it with five and a path of A. So depending on how you're showing work. Then I'm going to look at E. Well, to get to E, I have three coming from A. And again, three coming from A. And to get to D is a distance of one coming from A. So D is one and A. The next step is to choose which vertex I would not like to next visit. And the next visiting vertex should be the cheapest one or the shortest one, whatever the, the least amount is. So we can tell very easily that that is one for D. So I'm going to visit D and that means that again, the shortest distance is one and that path is A comma D. And again, I can either write A comma D here. Um, I typically just leave it as A if I'm showing it there. Now I have to look at each distance. I shouldn't have used blue. That might get confusing, but we're going to go with it. I have to look from D to each unvisited vertex. So as you can see, E has already been relabeled as 3A, but it's not a visited vertex. It's still an unvisited vertex because I've only visited A and D so far. Whoops, I should circle D right here. So now I'm going to look at E. And to get to E from D would have a distance of one plus three. So that's a distance of four. Now four happens to be greater than the three that's already there. So I'm not going to relabel E because we're only going to relabel if the cost is less. Then the other unvisited vertex is C and that would have a distance of one plus one or two. So this is two comma AD. So from here, I'm going to look, I'm sorry, I should have replaced it over here as well, to AD. From here, I'm going to look at any of the unvisited vertices and determine which is cheapest to get to. And that answer is C. To, to get to C, I'm going to take A to D. So now my cost is two and my path is AD and I'm just going to write ADC, ADC. Now, whether or not you include the C is sort of up to you. I find it easier to include the C. But again, as you can see over here, I only have AD. So now I have visited C, and I only have two more unvisited vertices of B and E. Coming from C, I now have to look at those two unvisited vertices and see if I can change any of the values. So to get to E from C, I would have a distance of two plus one, which is three. Now three is the same as three, so I'm just going to leave it as is. To get from C to B would have a distance of two plus one, which is three. Well, three is less than five, so I'm going to replace five with three. And instead of going straight from A, we went from A to D to C. So now B is replaced with three, and A is replaced with A, D, C. So now what? Well, now I have to choose a vertex to visit. Now you can see both B and E have a cost of three or distance of three. 
And so it really doesn't matter which one I choose because it's going to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and choose B to visit. So B has been visited. The cost is three. The path is A, D, C, B. Or you can leave it just as is up here, three A, D, C. And then of course the last one is E. So we're going to visit E and that has a cost of three. And then that's A, E or just 3A. So as you can see, it's kind of the same process, whether I'm using a table or a graph. And this tells me from A, the shortest path to B is a distance of three, and we go from A to D to C to B. To get to C, the shortest path is two, or distance is two, and the path is ADC. To get to D, the shortest path is one, and that's just straight from A to D. And to get to E, the shortest path is three, and that's from A to E. Here's a question for you to practice on your own. So try this question. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. Again, we're going to begin at A. I should have made that clear from the beginning, but the distance to get to A is zero, and all of the other distances are infinity. So, so far so good. Now I'm going to choose A and say, okay, I did choose A. I'm going to start there. I have visited A. Where can I get to from that visited vertex? So the visited vertex is A and I can get to either B, which is a distance of two. So I'm going to replace infinity with two coming from A. And if you want, you can write AB. Um, you might also see videos out there that just have you write the previous vertex, which is a little bit cleaner, but you have to do a little bit more work to find the path. So if I just, um, I'll just put these over here, just so you can see one more way in which you can show this work. But B has a weight of two coming from A, and C has a weight of three coming from A. Or again, the path would be AC, or the path would be AB. Now, from here, what am I going to do? I'm going to find the cheapest path. So this fastest or cheapest way is to get to B because two is less than three. So I'm going to choose B. I should have circled that A already. So I visited A, I'm now visiting B. And again, B has a distance of two and a path of AB or a previous vertex of A. So from B, I'm now going to look at any adjacent vertices. So from B, I can get to D, which would be two plus five or seven. So D is going to be replaced with seven, and that path is A, B, D, or a previous vertex of B, depending on how you'd like to show your work. I could also get to E. E would be a path of 2 plus 2, which is 4. And that path would be A to B to E, or a previous vertex of B. I can't get anywhere else, so Z is still not attainable from where I'm standing. So now I'm going to choose what is the cheapest vertex next. So that, in this case, is C, because 3 is the lowest number. So I keep forgetting to circle things, so I'm going to choose C, and C is going to be the next vertex that I visit. So we now have three and then AC locked in. And now I'm going to look at any vertices adjacent to C. So C can get to E. Now that path would be three plus five, which is eight. And currently E has a path or a weight of four. So I'm not going to relabel E because it would just be more expensive or more time or more distance. So now I'm just looking at four and seven and saying which one's smaller, four or seven. So obviously four is smaller, so I'm going to choose E. So E has now been visited with a, a distance of four and a path of ABE and I'm going to relabel any vertices that I can. So to get to D, 
I would have the four that it takes to get to E plus one more, which is a distance of five total. Currently the distance is seven. So five is better than seven. So I'm relabeling D with five. And that new path is A, B, E, D. Or the new previous vertex is that it's coming from E. Now I'm looking, oh, and then I have to look at Z and say, can I relabel Z? Well, yes, I can. So from to get to E was four, plus it's four more to get to Z. So now Z is getting replaced with four plus four, or eight. And that is A, B, E, Z, or previous vertex of E. Now I'm going to look at the five and the eight and choose the smallest of five and eight, which is of course five. I'm trying to find a color we haven't used and I'm striking out, oh, purple. So I'm going to choose five. So now I'm choosing D to visit. D has a weight of five. The path was A, B, E, D or a previous vertex of E. And the only thing I have left to do is either choose Z to be eight or see if I can get to Z faster going through D. So to get to D was a weight of five and to get from D to Z is two. So five plus two is seven and seven is better than eight. So I'm going to replace eight with seven and this path now becomes, because I'm coming from D, A, B, E, D, Z or a previous vertex of D. So now I've done it. I've found the cheapest path and of course then I would choose Z. So I found the cheapest path to each of these vertices. To, so if I needed to get from A to D, the cheapest is five with A, B, E, D as the path. Or again, if you're just looking at the previous vertex, so if you're just showing this, you can find the path. You would just have to do some backtracking. So let's say I was focused on Z. Z says, okay, you had to get to D first. And D said, okay, well, you had to get to E first. And E said, you had to get to B first. And B said, you had to get to A first. So it sort of gives you that path backwards. So up to you if you want to do just the previous vertex or if you want to write out the entire path or if you want to show the work on the table or on the graph. You do you, but just make sure that your steps are clear if you are in my class, because I will want to see what steps you followed to find the solution. Now, if the question said, find, just use Dijkstra's algorithm, showing the table would be sufficient, all of the work that I've shown in the table. If it specifically said, find the shortest path to Z, then you would say A, B, E, D, Z, and then with a distance of four, I'm sorry, of seven. So you would wanna make clear that that was the final solution. Up next, we're going to take a look at graph coloring.